Hiya, okay, so we're on to the final video for unit one of a higher human biology. So this is still energy systems in muscles and cells key area. Uh, and we're looking at muscle fibers this time around. So last video, we're looking at lactate metabolism. This time we're looking at different muscle fibers and how they supply energy uh, for movement. Now, something to get into your head a little bit is the idea is there's different types of muscle. OK, so there's cardiac muscle, there's smooth muscle and skeletal muscle is just examples of types of muscles. Skeletal muscles move bones. That is their purpose. OK. Human muscle tends to contain a mixture of both slow and fast twitch muscle. Okay, so we'll look at these two features later on. What does slow and fast twitch mean? Athletes tend to show more of one particular type depending on their sport. Now, slow twitch muscle tends to favor long, slower sports. So sports that um, take longer to, to actually complete, like a marathon, for example. Fast twitch muscle tends to be more crucial in sports that are faster so for example sprinting or weightlifting okay so what we see in non-athletic people is a kind of mix of distribution of both of these types of fiber whereas when we look at athletes they tend to favor more one type than the other they all have both types of muscle though now one of the differences between slow and fast twitch muscle fiber is the concentration of myoglobin this is a new substance that we're going to introduce now myoglobin is a protein that's good at storing oxygen inside of its cells and this helps to provide one of the raw materials for aerobic respiration which you should have figured out is oxygen okay and the production of atp okay so the idea is more myoglobin more aerobic respiration possible more production of atp is possible now, slow twitch muscle fiber features are listed here. So the idea is they contract more slowly than fast twitch muscle fibers. So fast twitch muscle fibers can contract very, very, very fast. Slow twitch muscle contracts more slowly, but they can contract for longer than fast twitch muscles. They can hold that contraction for a much longer period of time. They rely on aerobic respiration for ATP production. OK, so they're producing large amounts of ATP to supply those long, slow contractions. They have many mitochondria because they do a lot of aerobic respiration. They have a large blood supply running to them. So we find they've got lots and lots of good blood vessels running to them. And that's supplying oxygen and glucose for the aerobic respiration. And they contain large amounts of myoglobin. So remember that protein that helps store oxygen inside of its cells. And then the major storage fuel for um, slow twitch muscle fibers is fats. OK, now when we look at slow twitch muscle fibers, again, it tends to be marathon runners that show large amounts of slow twitch muscle compared to fast twitch muscle fibers in their body. OK, examples of sports that uh, support the growth of slow twitch muscle are things like cross country skiing, uh, because that is an extremely endurance type uh, sport long cycling so we're not talking sprint events but something like um, the long stages of the tour de france that is going to support the growth of slow twitch muscle and it'll be slow twitch muscle that will be used in order to to allow those events to occur marathon running as you can see from bottom and also triathlon as well so your standard distance triathlon is that they would support the growth of slow twitch muscle because of the amount of long slow contractions that are required for these sports Fast twitch muscle fiber contracts faster than slow twitch, but for a shorter period of time. They tend to burn through their available energy a lot quicker and they fatigue faster. They generate ATP only through glycolysis. OK, so that's a key fact you need to know. They don't really do aerobic respiration. So as a result of the lack of aerobic respiration, they only have a few mitochondria, a very low number of mitochondria. They have a lower blood supply than slow twitch because they're only doing glycolysis. They don't need that big oxygen supply to them. Uh, they've got low amounts of myoglobin because, again, they're not doing aerobic respiration, so they don't need that oxygen holding protein. But their major storage fuel is glycogen, so a fast breaking down carbohydrate that can be readily converted to glucose uh, and supply for glycolysis. OK, now fast twitch muscle fibers tend to be found in athletes that do fast sports. So we're looking for again, we all have slow and fast twitch muscle fibers. But what we see is fast twitch muscle fibers tend to be found in larger numbers compared to slow twitch in people that do fast sports. For example, you can see above there sprinting. 
okay weightlifting is another one and um, even things like the the long jump is that that's a, a very short fast contraction javelin throwing as well again short sprinting distances followed by a sudden lurch of the arm that's fast twitch muscle fibers that are engaging there you know you do not see weightlifters having to hold their weights in various awkward positions for more than half a second or more than i think it's three seconds they have to hold it above their head for is it five it's something like that, but short distances of time, because the idea is those muscle fibers, those strong, fast muscle fibers will only contract for a very short period of time and they will fatigue and then collapse. Something interesting to see is the differences in shapes between slow and fast uh, twitch muscle. Slow twitch muscle doesn't tend to be terribly bulky. It doesn't tend to sort of beef people up terribly well. And um, so if you compare, for example, the bodily structure of Marathon runners versus sprinters, they both do running. Running is their thing. But if you look at the size of the main muscles that are involved, so the biceps, the arms, in the marathon runners, they tend to be extremely skinny looking. That's that slow twitch muscle fiber is, is much slimmer than the fast twitch muscle fiber, which tends to bulk up very, very large um, and provide that power, that intensity uh, to, their, to their sport. Okay, so for summary, this is all things that you could get asked about in an exam about concentrations of myoglobin about respiration types that are in each muscle type about the blood supply it tends to be here's a table tick the box for slow and fast twitch so this is just a memorization exercise in this so the idea is slow twitch muscle fibers contract slowly for a long time it's aerobic respiration so they can do that long exercise because of all the atp they've got lots of myoglobin to supply the oxygen for it they've got a good blood supply to supply the oxygen for it and their main storage fuel is fats for that one fast twitch muscle fibers their contraction speed is fast for a shorter time uh, their main form of respiration is glycolysis their myoglobin concentration is low or lower than slow twitch muscle fibers um, they've got a poor blood supply and it's glycolysis, sorry, glycogen, glycogen that is, click that down so you can confirm that, glycogen is our major storage fuel. Okay, now that is it for the whole of unit one. You are now one third of the way through the higher human course, so well done. Uh, in terms of what's next, unit two comes next, which is about physiology and health, pretty much half reproduction, half cardiovascular disease. Um, so lots more definitions coming. Again, an essential document that you should be using is your PLP, upside down, your PLP, because it's got basic notes in there. It's got suggestions for uh, links to revise with. It's got suggestions for flashcards that you should be building. And of course, if you're off sick at any point, it's got some basic notes just to help you uh, get more familiar with content. Now, just memorizing the PLP will not be enough. What the higher um, course is looking for you to do is apply your knowledge to various situations. So you are far more likely in the exam to come up with questions of here is a graph showing myoglobin concentration in different athletes. Now tell us about the muscle fiber types that you find in those. They want you to apply your knowledge to that working out. OK, here's a graph showing high myoglobin. This must be a slow twitch muscle fiber, which must be a long, slow sport. OK, so it's application of knowledge that is key um, and that is meaning that you must have a good grounding in your basic knowledge, but then be able to apply it to outside circumstances, which is why I really recommend the PBL problems that are in here, because those are applying your knowledge questions. OK, so I shall see you in unit two.